In today's video, we're going to be comparing two of New Zealand's most popular entry-level electric vehicles. We have in one corner the BYD Atto 3, and in the other, the MG ZS EV. And my mission today is to find out not only which car is better, but which car is better value. The most important thing you want to know, first of all, is price. And this machine, the BYD Atto 3, after the clean car rebate, will set you back just over $51,000. However, this car over here, well, that's something different. This MG ZS EV after the rebate clocks in at just over $45,000. So already I can tell you the winner is the MG ZS EV. Thanks for watching. Good night. Okay, obviously there's a lot more to consider than just price. There's range as well. And this machine, the MG, will do 320 Ks per charge. However, this is where the tables turn because the BYD, the top spec one, does 420 Ks per charge. So as you can see, we've got a lot more stats, figures, and acceleration to consider before we can recommend which is the better car. So let's crack into it. Now I've already reviewed both these vehicles in separate videos, and I'll put the links below for you to check out at your leisure. But in this video, I'll be keeping score of which vehicle beats the other, starting with boring stuff like which car has more city-friendly dimensions. And it's the MG that's able to fit into tighter spaces than the BYD, although it's a bit taller. But what about boot space? Well, in this instance, the Addo 3 has more, but which is easier to climb into? Not exactly a useful test, but... It's the MG that wins that round. Speaking of room, I measured both cars having the same distance from seat to the ceiling, so it's a draw there. And in the back, it's also too close to call. But in terms of legroom, it's the Addo 3 that wins this round, offering just a little more space for my pasty thighs. Plus, it also has an armrest while the MG doesn't. As for a flat floor, both are as flat as the earth itself, according to some people on the internet. However, when it comes to PSC, while the MG has definitely improved with this new model's updated interior, the Atto 3 takes the crown, thanks to its larger center console. And while we're being unscientific, which one has a better sounding door clunk? And while many electric cars these days have fartments or front compartments for extra storage, with these two, it's a no-score drawer. Both vehicles are full of electric car components with nowhere to put luggage or potatoes. Let's whip out the accessories now and compare them, starting with Android CarPlay and Apple Auto, and it's the MG that wins this round, having both, while the Atto 3 only has Bluetooth just like grandma used to make. But which of these two electric beasties will allow you to open the sunroof and command your troops like Dark helmet? Well, both of them in fact. Won all in that round. Also, both cars have seated heats, but which one has electronically adjustable front seats? The BYD has it in both the driver and the passenger. The MG has it in the driver, but the driver alone. So it's the Atto 3 that wins this round. And which has more outlets for charging? Well, the Atto 3 has a total of four USB outlets throughout the car, plus a 12-volt cigarette lighter socket, while the MG ZS EV has, well, exactly the same, one all. But which comes with an emergency charger as standard? Well, the MG does, and so does the BYD. That's another draw. And on the subject of charging, which car has the more convenient plug location? You can see the MG's is right at the front, while the BYD's is a third of the way up the car, so the point goes to the MG. Now let's talk Lokshara with automated boot lids, and it's the Atto 3 which allows you to not lift a finger while opening the boot, even though the MG does have a boot open button on the key fob, so round whatever this is to the Atto 3. But what if you live in the country or just enjoy driving over things? Which has more ground clearance? Yeah, both measure in at around 20 centimeters from the bottom of the battery pack to the ground, so no winners there. But what about the view out the rear window? Well, the rear view from Chateau BYD looks decent, but the MG has a better rear vista. Although, what about reversing using the cameras alone? Well, both cars have 360 degree camera systems, but in this case, the sheer enormity of BYD's center display makes it just a little easier to squeeze into a spot. And speaking of easy, the MG allows you to drop all the windows with one press of all four buttons at once, and so does the BYD, but what about putting them back up? The BYD also does this with a single click, but the MG doesn't, so it's one point to the Atto 3. Let's talk wheels now, and while both have 21555s, the MG has 17-inch wheels, 
while the BYD is the size queen with 18 inches. And lastly in this segment, which of the two vehicles has the most cringe-inducing corporate badging? Well, the MG looks pretty normal. Now let's take a look at the Atto 3. Ugh, yeah, BYD takes the cringe crown with build your dreams emblazoned across the back. Not only are some Atto 3 owners paying to have this slogan removed, but build your dreams also is an anagram of adios, Rudy Rumble, which kind of sounds like a Beatles album. Now don't worry if you're losing track at this point, because I'll tally things up at the end of the video. In the meantime, I'll stop babbling because it's long overdue to put both of these electric cars to the test on the road. Oh, I do love that electric acceleration. And it's great to be back behind the wheel of the MG ZS EV. Now full disclosure, I've always liked this car from the minute I first got in one. Oh well, gosh, a year ago was the first time I drove one. The reason why, it's a really shallow reason and I'm so sorry. It's because it's just so affordable. It's such a stupidly affordable car. Like this is the top spec model. And even so, after the rebate, it's 45 grand. 45 grand for a well-appointed car with wireless charging and automatic folding mirrors, electric front driver's seat, all that stuff. But then if you go for the more cost-effective version, the more affordable version, we should say, after the rebate, it's 41 grand. 41 grand for an electric car that does 320 k's per charge and you never have to buy a single drop of petrol ever again. What's there not to like? All right, let's actually talk some car stuff. Now, first of all, seating position. Seating position in this is very comfortable. Although one thing you may notice is that the armrests are off kilter. So the central armrest is a little higher than the door armrest, which is a little lower. So you're gonna be driving a little bit askew if you rely on that to prop you up. Let me put up the windows and turn on the air conditioning. There we go. The first thing you notice once you put the windows up is it's quiet. The loudest noise in this car is the fan from the air conditioner, and that's not even turned up high. There's something about electric cars that just makes you calmer. In fact, it's scientifically proven that electric cars make you calmer. And this is a great example. It's a lovely, spacious, comfortable car. The pillars are not too thick. The rear vision mirror does not hang low and obscure your vision. The cathedral-like glass ceiling lets in a lot of light. Even though it has a very dark interior, darker than my soul, it's still a very pleasant place to be. It's also got gadgets you'd expect when you're paying 45 grand. It's got the speed sign detection. It uses actual cameras to read speed signs as they go past, and it will show the corresponding speed sign on the dashboard. However, it's not always very accurate. So be warned, you shouldn't rely on it entirely to figure out what speed the road is you're on. It also has a giant 8-inch, oh crikey, help yourself guys. It also has a giant 8-inch touchscreen display which allows you to control the ventilation system and of course the audio inputs from USB to Bluetooth. Uh, and of course it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It also has a particulate matter filter built into the car to scrub the air nice and clean, which is great. But it doesn't have Spotify like the BYD does. In fact, there's a few things the BYD has that this doesn't. But here in the glorious BYD Atto 3, I don't have to worry about Spotify problems because I've got Android Apple and CarPlay Auto. No, hang on, no, I don't actually. For some reason, the BYD Atto 3 still doesn't have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's coming though. It's been promised for months and it may even be in the car available by the time this video is out. In the meantime, you can use Bluetooth obviously, and the quality of the sound system is really good as you're about to hear very shortly. But first, I just wanna draw your attention to something I love. The indicator stalk is on the correct side. Yes, I love that, I love that. Fantastic, there's other stuff that I love about this car. The interior for one, look at it, it's wild. I personally love it, it's my favorite of the two cars because, well, it's, it's like it was designed by someone who loves cars. It sweeps, it swishes, it's got cool stuff. And the seating position is, even though really, really similar to the MG, it feels as if you're more in the car, which is nonsense. You couldn't possibly be. The seats are the same height off the ground. You're in the same sort of position, but this gives you more of a, I don't know, a, a sporty car feel, which is crazy. It's all, it's all a mind trick. But back to the dashboard design. I love it personally, but I do know that there are people who won't buy this car simply because they think this is too radical. There are people who've gone with the MG ZS EV just because they don't like the design. And I get it, it's wild. It's a bit out there even for me, but I like anything that's different. I mean, look at this mission control thing. This whole design was based on exercise equipment. The dashboard design is to reflect sinewy muscle. This whole center console area is based off a treadmill. See, there's the basey motor a bit here. There's the part you run on. 
It's all very based on exercise equipment. It's designed to make you feel athletic and strong. <laughs> something I never do. And something else this car has that the MG doesn't is a built-in dash camera. So it's recording constantly. And if you have an accident, like I have had in the past, thanks to other people, then you've got that evidence to show that no, you weren't at fault, or maybe you were. But even if you were, this car, like the MG, has a five-star safety rating. More airbags than Parliament sitting. It is a safety cage on wheels. Something both cars have in common, though, is adjustable regenerative braking and driving modes between eco, normal, and sport. So if I'm in normal mode right now, if I put this into sport mode by adjusting the drive mode button, there we go, it instantly makes the throttle response much quicker. But I think, as good as this is, I think the MG has slightly sharper throttle response, just a little bit more oomph, even though this car has more power and more torque. Oh gosh, it does move well though. Oh, how can you go wrong with electric propulsion? And then if I adjust the regenerative braking modes, I've only got two, I've got standard or high. If I put it on high, can I come to a stop without touching the brake using so-called one pedal driving? Let's find out. Oh, this is not gonna work. No, 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 no. Okay, all right, so, okay, there's no one pedal driving. You still need the brake. <laughs> And back in the MG, let's compare driving mode. So right now I'm in eco mode, which is kind of like pushing a sponge cake under your right foot. But if I press sport mode, oh yeah, I think the throttle res oh good lord. The th throttle response is much sharper on the MG at low speed in sport mode. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's instant. With the Addo 3, there's more of a surge of power that comes on. This is like a, is like a neck snap. It's brilliant, but what about regen braking? Can I bring the car to a complete stop just using the natural regenerative braking properties of an electric car? Well, let me switch on KERS, Kinetic Energy Recovery System, to maximum. We've got three different modes. There we go, mode three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach the same giveaway sign. Take my foot off the brake. Oh, it's better, but No, I still have to press the brake. So all that info is fun, it's fascinating, but you can't really review a car properly in Auckland City. I mean, we're crawling along in roadworks as is normal in Auckland. What I want to do is take these two beasts out of the city on a preset course for both of them, test their handling, test the lane keeping assist, the adaptive cruise, the noise levels, all that sort of stuff, and then put them side by side, and of course also test the charging speed. And we're going to crack into that tomorrow on another beautiful sunny day. But first, here's some family friendly info you need to know, plus, Let's test the audio systems. Let's start with comparing child seating. The ZS EV has two ISOFIX connections on the rear seat, and so does the Atto 3. But the Atto 3 has another ISOFIX connection on the front passenger seat, so the point goes to the BYD. Next up, let's compare rear seat width for extra wide child seats, and the BYD's rear seat is 132 centimeters wide, while the MG's is 126 centimeters, so another point to the BYD. But what about boot length? From the seat to the boot lip, the MG offers 164 centimeters, while the BYD offers 161. Point goes to the MG. And on the subject of hauling stuff, both vehicles can be outfitted with tow bars, with the MG able to tow up to 500 kilos braked, while the BYD can tow up to 750 kilos braked. Spare tyres anyone? No, unfortunately not. Like many new cars, both these vehicles only have tyre repair kits instead of actual spare tyres. So nil all, and good luck on your road trip. As for paint colour options, the MG has five paint colours to choose from, all included in the price, while the BYD has only four and three of those cost extra. And lastly, let's compare the MG's six speaker sound system with the BYD's eight speaker sound system, which is clearer with more depth. Well, as you can hear, it's pretty close. Both are fairly good, but I'm gonna give the point to the BYD. But do let me know if you think I've lost my mind or my hearing. In the meantime though, let's get both these cars on the highway for more tests. And we're on the motorway and it's time to test the adaptive cruise and lane keeping assist. And I've already actually tested this when I did full reviews on these cars. And 
to be completely honest, neither systems were brilliant, and that's because good lane keeping assist requires good hardware, and good hardware is very expensive. That being said, let's turn it on and give it a go. Now, the MG has one problem with its cruise control and adaptive cruise settings, is that it's hidden on the stalk behind the steering wheel spoke. So, to turn it on, if I can go from memory, I can't see what I'm doing, I'm just going by, going by braille here. Are we on? No, what did that do? Set! Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna set it to the minimum distance between me and the vehicle in front. Speed is set to a maximum of 100. Uh, ah, I believe I have to turn on the adaptive steering though. Um, where is it? Settings? No. I don't like that I have to take my eyes off the wheel while driving to turn this on. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Vehicle. No, where is MG Pilot? Here we go, lane assistance. So lane assistant is on. Whew, okay, that took a bit of faffing around, but we've got the car driving itself. I'm gonna relax my hands a little bit. The, the lane keeping assist, um, it's not full self-driving, obviously. It's designed to just assist you. But even so, it seems to be a little bit uncertain. See, look, it's letting me go into the lane there. The people behind me probably think I've lost my mind. <laughs> I promise it's a test. The adaptive cruise is doing a great job. You can see the traffic slowing down ahead. So I'm expecting it to slow down. Yep, there we go. Look at that, oh, slowing down nicely as well. Oh, that's excellent. But like I said, you can only expect so much from such affordable hardware, but is the BYD any better? Well, let's find out. Here we are in the Atto 3. Let me turn on Adaptive Cruise. I believe it's that. Nope, we're slowing down, okay. I thought it'd be easier to use because it's right in front of me, but obviously not. Resume, set. Go, go, go. Why are you slowing down? Okay, we figured it out. There's a really, really faint little marker in the top right of the dashboard here. Let me turn on now Lane Keeping Assist. Okay, so I don't really know what that says. I'm not going to read it because like the paragraph has appeared on the dashboard. <laughs> Let's just see how it goes. I'm going to relax my hands. Is it any better than the MG? Okay, so it's hanging to the left of the lane for some reason. Getting really close to that truck. Yeah. After a couple of Ks driving with the system, I would say that, yeah, I think it is a little bit better than the MG system. It's a little more confident, but I'm just worried that confidence is misplaced. It's like, remember when you were a 17-year-old driver, you were the best driver in the world, right? And I think this is kind of like a 17-year-old driver. It's just a little bit more confident than it should be for its ability. In fact, I might just turn it off. And because the MG has Android Apple and CarPlay Auto, I can do voice commands by pressing the steering wheel button now that it's connected to my phone. What's my favorite color? Blood. Okay, but one thing I can't do is this. Reduce fan speed. Sorry, I can't control that in this car. Now, even though this car doesn't have Apple Android at the time of making this video anyway, it still has voice commands, and with those voice commands you can control car functions. For example, increase fan speed. All right, fan speed is going up by one. See, that's brilliant, and the response time's really fast as well. That's pretty impressive. As I ate up the miles in both vehicles, it was time to look at efficiency. And we've just done 50 kilometers of travel so far. My average speed is 78 k's an hour. And my efficiency? Well, that is 14.5 kilowatt hours or units of electricity per 100 k. That's what I'm averaging right now. That's not bad, but how does the BYD compare? Efficiency here in the BYD, however, is well, it's an all-score draw because I have 14.5 kilowatt hours showing on the display. And, yep, we've pretty much done the same distance, although the speed, the average speed has been lower. So I guess you could say this uses a little more electricity, but that's because it is a little heavier. But onwards, because now I want to test the deceleration or regen braking, and of course, the noise levels and zero to 100 time. But let's start with the MG. The next test is to go from 50 to 10 using regen braking. Regen max is on. Here we go. There we go. And now the BYD, 50 to 10. Ready and go. Good lord. Okay, I think it's safe to say the MG won that one. The regen in this car is very weak. And this is on high mode as well. Oh, 
Oh boy, okay, I might just give up. Let's cut straight to the 0 to 100 time, starting with the MG. 3, 2, 1. Gosh, that's good for such an affordable car. Okay, that was pretty impressive, but is the BYD any better? 3, 2, 1. It feels a little sluggish off the mile. Okay, oh, it ramps up. Okay, it ramps up quick. Whoa, look at that. Okay. The winner is the Addo 3. I can really feel that extra 20 kilowatts of power though. Even though this thing weighs 70 kilos more, it's just got a bit more torque, a bit more oomph, and it shows. Okay, what about handling though? For that, cut to the MG. One thing I love about the MG ZS EV is that it's really forgiving. It's a great fun car that's not trying to be something it's not. It's a people mover, it's a crossover, it's a taller vehicle, but because like most electric cars, center of gravity is really low, it hangs on much better than you think it would going around the corners. It's no rocket ship, it's no sports car, but for what it is, it will impress you. Like I said, it's forgiving. It's great for people like me who aren't actually really that good a driver, but like to pretend they are. It means it lets you get right to the ragged edge, and just when you think, oh no, I've overdone it, no, no, it's still got more to give. It's deceptive. See, look at that. It's, it's not lumbering. Even though it's a big, heavy vehicle, it's not lumbering around the corner. And it has oof, just the right amount of power to pick you up and throw you out. I just realized I'm wearing a goofy grin. This car is goofy grin inducing. It's just fun. It's fun, it's so much fun to throw a car that's not really designed to be thrown into corners, to throw it into the corner, and then to find out that actually it does all right. Oh, that weight distribution is pretty good. It doesn't feel like the back wants to fling out at any moment. I'm really keen though to see how the BYD compares because I've reviewed both cars, but they were months apart. But to have them on the same day, on the same slice of road, and I love this secret driving road, by the way. Oh, ho, 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 this thing's great. I can't wait to see how the BYD compares, so let's cut straight to that. I've got the Addo 3 on the exact same road, which is my secret driving road, somewhere south of the Bombay Hills. I'm not going to tell you where it is, because then you'll be here every weekend. Gosh, that extra power is just delightful. Even though it's front-wheel drive, it's crazy how good this thing is for a crossover. What is basically a family car? But is it any better than the MG? Well, for that, I'm going to need a sharp corner. It's funny, despite the extra weight, this feels tighter. And I think that comes down to the multi-link suspension in the back. It's just more nimble. It's more sure-footed than the MG. But that doesn't mean the MG doesn't handle well. The MG handles well, but this is just a step up. Although, I think the MG is a little more forgiving for people that can't really drive that well, like me. Even though this is a family car, it's a family crossover, it doesn't handle like one. That's insane. Woo! See, I think we're getting near the limit there. And that's the difference between this and the MG. The MG, when you get near the limit, it's okay. You've still got more cornering, more handling, more tire left. With this, when you get near the limit, that's the limit. Once you're over that limit, you're in the ditch. <laughs> oh, I think if I were purely interested in driving and handling, I would probably choose the Atto 3, but if I'm more interested in comfort and forgiveness, I'd probably take the MG. Oh, I've got the same goofy expression on my face, I just realized. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. What a tough choice between this and the MG. The MG is good, but this is maybe just a little gooder. Ah, okay, what about charging though? Well, let's take the MG to the Hyper Rapid Charger and compare this to that. But first, let's look at cabin noise at 100 k's an hour on our course chip roads. <laughs> the Addo 3 is just over 76 decibels, while in the MG, it's exactly the same, so another draw there. Okay, now let's talk charging speed, and you've got three main options. Option one, you could charge both cars at home using the granny chargers that come with the vehicles, but a full charge would take you a day and a half. Option two is to install a 7 kilowatt wall-mounted charger in your garage, which I'd recommend doing if you drive a lot, with a full charge taking around eight hours or overnight, and one of these chargers would set you back two or three grand, depending on how complicated the install is, but it's a good investment. Option three, and the best option for a road trip, however, is to use one of ChargeNet's rapid chargers and they have heaps of these things all over the country with more going in every single month. 
Plus, they also have a growing number of hyper-rapid chargers, which can not only charge three cars at once, but can pump out 300 kilowatts. And that means with cars like this one, I can put 100 k's of range back into the battery in just over four minutes. It's insanely fast and I love where the technology is going. And not only that, but all of ChargeNet's rapid chargers run on renewable electricity because it all comes from Ecotricity, which is our country's only carbon zero certified electricity provider. That means that every single electron you pump into your car is made from only renewable wind power, hydropower or solar power. So not only is it the cleanest electricity in the country, but it's really affordable too. I mean, I use them and I'm a tightwad. So head over to ecotricity.co.nz and chuck in your address to see how much money and carbon you can save by switching over today. But now let's see which of these two cars charges fastest starting with the MG. I have the battery down to 28%, which is not too bad considering I've done two days of fairly enthusiastic driving. But what's the charging speed like? Let's find out. Okay, so using one of these charge net chargers is a piece of cake. You either use your mobile app or swipe your key fob, which I will do. You select your plug type. Now this car uses CCS, that shape there. Chatamo is mostly for older cars and Nissan Leafs. So let's select that one. The plug will flash, and there are two CCS plugs on each of these two chargers. So I'm gonna grab the flashing one. All right, let's plug it in, and now we get to see how fast this car charges. All right, so it's been charging for just over a couple of minutes now, and we are peaking at about 66 kilowatts. Now that's not too bad, that means it's probably gonna reach 80% full in about 30 minutes or so. Let's find out. All right, so we're now up to 80% charge, and it's taken 30 minutes. Now the question is, is how does the BYD compare? Just as before, to use the charger, use your mobile app or swipe your key fob. Select the plug type, we know it's CCS, just like the MG. Then you grab the one that's flashing, that one. And you plug in the car. Okay, it's been a minute now and already the charging speed is 88 and a half kilowatts. Now that's a little bit faster than the MG, but we have more capacity to fill. So let's check back in a few minutes. Now the car is charging, I can quickly talk to you about battery warranties on these vehicles. Now the BYD, it has a battery warranty of eight years or 160,000 kilometers. That's very impressive. Whereas the battery warranty for this MG ZS EV, although it's seven years, not eight like the BYD, it's unlimited kilometers. And as someone who does a lot of Ks every year, I'd probably burn through that BYD 160,000 Ks warranty in about four or five years. Whereas this MG, I could rack up 500,000 kilometers in seven years and it's still covered under warranty. So if I was just buying it for peace of mind alone, probably go with the MG on that one. As for charge, this car right now is at 55% full. Now the MG, you remember, was like 28% full. The reason this has got so much more electricity left is number one, it's got a much, much bigger battery. Number two, when I started this video, this car was at 100%, the MG was at 80%. So in a future video comparison, I'll get both cars starting at 100%, but I'm pressed for time. I've only had two days to film the video and only three days to edit it. So it's been pretty hectic. Next video will be obviously much more comprehensive. If you did get a kick out of this video though, please give me a like and a subscribe, even if it's purely out of sympathy. I don't mind, just lie to me. As for the next video, you're gonna to wanna to subscribe for that alone because it's a weird vehicle and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. It's like nothing I've ever driven before. Hit the subscribe button, you won't regret it. Right now, let's get this thing charged up. Well, it's only been 16 minutes and we've already reached 80% in the Addo 3. So in terms of charging speed, that's the winner. Well done, BYD. And with both cars charged up, it's time to unplug, hit the highway, and see which is the ultimate winner, the MG ZS EV or the BYD Atto 3. Speak of the devil, there's a BYD Atto 3 passing me. And if after watching this video, you're still undecided of which car to go with, then why not check out this third option? It's a wild card that I got to review called the Sangyong Corando Emotion. Not only does it tow more, but it also has more room inside. So check this out. Yep, the Sangyong Corando E-Motion is an all-electric people mover. It costs 51 grand after the clean car rebate and does 340 Ks per charge. 
It's also longer and wider than both the Addo 3 or the MG ZS EV, while being able to tow up to 1500 kilos. Now I had the chance to put one of these through its paces recently, so be sure to check out that video as it is decent value for money, being ideal for bigger families and for taller drivers. But at last, it is the moment you've been waiting for. The total, the summary, the tally of the score. Which car is better? The MG ZS EV or the BYD Atto 3? Yeah, it's not going to surprise you. This is the ultimate winner. The BYD Atto 3 is just an excellent all-rounder. It's got it going on. It's got text. It's got features. It's got gadgetry. It's got slightly better suspension. It's got a little bit more room as well. Overall, this is the winner. But the MG is still an excellent car, and I really, really like it. The MG, however, does have areas where it beats the Atto 3, such as a more normal-looking dashboard. A lot of people find that really important. Also, it's much, much more affordable. Seriously affordable, like stupidly affordable. But regardless, both cars have great battery warranties, have batteries that are gonna outlast the car, are full of features, are incredibly safe, and will give you miles and miles of happy motoring. But which one would I choose personally? That, oh, that's really tough, because on one hand, I love the gadgets and features of the Addo 3, but then on the other hand, I am part Dutch and a natural born tightwad, and that means that I'm kind of inclined to buy the MG just because it's stupidly affordable. I mean, both versions of the MG, both versions of this car, the MG, are cheaper than a brand new Honda Civic. And how are they doing that? I don't know. It's crazily affordable. Regardless of which vehicle you choose, both vehicles are very efficient. Both have stupidly long warranties. Both are incredibly safe. And if you're running on Ecotricity's power, both are entirely emission free. You can't lose. The thing is though, regardless of which vehicle you go for, whether it's the MG or this BYD, I don't think you're gonna be unhappy with your purchase because I've spoken to both owners of both vehicles and both of them are stupidly satisfied. So I don't think it matters too much which one you go for, you're not gonna be unhappy.